Do you want to emigrate to Portugal, but have got burning questions about getting your visa and residency sorted? Well, you've come to the right place. Today, I'll be speaking to an expert immigration lawyer from Lisbon, who will answer 11 common questions about becoming a resident of Portugal. Hi everyone, I'm Samantha North and welcome to Digital Emigre. Here's where you'll find news and guidance on moving to EU countries, getting residency as a remote worker, online entrepreneur or investor and applying for EU citizenship. We also talk quite a lot about taxes. If you're interested in emigrating to the EU and becoming an EU citizen, do subscribe to this channel and hit the bell to be notified when I release a new video. Let's dive into the interview. Yes, of course. So they will be eligible, first of all, for the D7 program, and they will be able to work remotely for the UK company in Portugal. That's absolutely one of the possible routes to get the D7 res uh, residency permit in Portugal. Yes, it's perfectly possible. First of all, of course, to apply and get a resident permit, they will need to prove that they have some kind of regular income coming in to their uh, Portuguese bank account, and we can talk about that later. But for your, uh, answering your question, the minute they get the resident permit in Portugal, the D7 resident permit, they will be allowed to have professional activity in Portugal, and that means they will be allowed to work either you know, with a working agreement or as a freelancer. They will be able to work here in Portugal, yes. Mm. Yeah, and, and the main reasons um, are becoming, I, 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 I always say it's a dynamic process because the, even the main reasons have changed throughout time because there's a lot of applications nowadays. Uh, Portugal is becoming more and more trending and everyone is willing to come to Portugal. That means that our embassy and our ministry uh, is becoming more demand in terms of proofs. And proofs now, what we, would, we are facing, and now very recently, and it, this was not the case, um, you know, like one year ago and before pandemic times, is that it's becoming very important to have at least one year of minimum salary for in Portugal in the Portuguese bank account. Secondly, it's also becoming important to have a residency assured in Portugal contractually and not only have, you know, a hotel booked and then have a residency uh, once they arrive in Portugal. We're talking about the first step, which is at the embassy in their country of residency. And thirdly, they, it's becoming, again, this depends on the embassy when they're starting the process. And I know this is strange for you to know, but the fact is the embassies are reacting a bit different. Uh, so we don't have a really a standard all over uh, the world but it's also becoming popular to um to prove that the applicant knows our country so he or she was already in portugal for at least once in their lives at least that <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so in that situation a person from the uk or the us or another country who can enter schengen easily it's a good idea to come as a tourist for 90 yes. days or Exactly. I know during COVID times it was very complicated to even get to Schengen and all the travel restrictions. But uh, we would advise now from now onwards and uh, with everything a little bit open, especially after the vaccination program is in place, um, it would be what we can say. It helps. It helps uh, to get it approved um, more and more. Yeah. And just on, on that point about the residency, um, you were saying that they need to have some contractual situation. Preferable for the embassy to show a contractual situation. So that could be a tenancy contract. So how long should it be? Yes, the tenancy at least well at least six months and with the possibility of being renovated. One year which would be wonderful. That's the normal long term rent in Portugal. Usually is done for one year, but yeah. it can be a little bit less. There are different solutions for this, and I would say in my regards as a lawyer that, but we haven't tested this one, so uh, there's something that I would like to just clarify, and we are trying to get answers from our embassies, is working with the promissory agreement, a rental promissory agreement, meaning there's, that will be, uh, 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 that will be transformed into a rental agreement if the residency visa is approved, which makes sense because the person still doesn't know on first stage when they are applying, whether they will be approved or not. Exactly, so because of that, 
that could be a solution. A second solution, and we talked about very recently in our last panel, we were discussing about these small de legal details that are involved. But, uh, one would, another one would be having a rental agreement, for example, but under condition. That means the co rental agreement will only start if the residency visa is approved. Yes. Okay, but it's already dropped and it would be under a condition. We call it under condition. So when the program started, um, in fact, the uh, first step, what we call the first step, the application for the visa itself, uh, started in our embassies in the country of residency or the country of nationality. It can be either of them. If, when we talk about residency, it has to be a legal residency. So it has to be one of these two situations. But um, lately, lately, no, it started more than one year ago, um, our government started to do uh, agreements with uh, the agencies, the FPS, uh, all over the world. So there are many situations where the first application will start of that with VFES agency and not directly at the embassy um, in many countries nowadays. But still, there are some countries that are still, the application still starts at our embassies. It will depend. We always do that work and we always, of course, um, guide the clients according to their nationality or country of residency. And we will work that and we will check and we will book. It will really depend. But I can give you just an example uh, in the United States, for example. It really depends on the state of residency. Some states we can work with VFS, others we have to um, work directly with the embassy. <laughs> yes, the success rate, we have a very high success rate. I would say more than 95% are successful, which is very, very good. And those that are not, has to, um, they were not, was more at the beginning, as I said, it was this dynamic process. Um, even the embassies were not still not very clear at the beginning whether the income should be like just savings. For example, having savings in the bank account would be that enough or not because it's still a passive income. But nowadays um, it's becoming clear and it's important for the approval to not only have like, uh, you know, passive and savings, but also proving that there is some income coming on a regular basis um, to the Portuguese bank account. Uh, that will be uh, very, very important. When we start the application, it's not the Portuguese bank account. Portu we can go probably later, or can you talk about this at this stage? Um, but we used to open bank accounts and the money would be transferred on the second stage. When you say second stage, is after the approval of the residency visa. Uh, and already in Portugal. Nowadays, it's not like that. We need to prove first that there is enough money in the Portuguese bank account, meaning at least in the minimum salary, uh, one year of the Portuguese minimum salary seated in the Portuguese bank account, and secondly, have and prove the origin of the funds and, and income coming on a regular basis. That became key for the approval rate and, and the success of the application. But it, it, anyway, it's always, we always, have to study and do a kind of uh, the profile of each client, analyze all the incomes, analyze all the documentation. We always do a checklist. We are very close to, uh, to the client. We, uh, we guide the client. We book the appointment to start the first stage at the VFES agency or at the embassy. And we accompany for, you know, from A to Z. So that means we will be there for everything, banking, opening bank account, uh, creating tax number, checking all the documentation to prove the income, checking the documentation and guiding to prove the residency in order to be uh, approved. And that's why, and we are always updating with our embassy. So I, when I say always, that means more than uh, like at least two, three times per week, we are checking, we are always, you know, communicating with the different agencies and embassies because that helps us uh, to guide, to better guide uh, our clients and that's why we have a very good uh, success rate it's because of them but the key here now and i'm talking now that for you and specifically for uk citizens it, it really changed so that means that we need to go through the d7 procedure and when we talk about d7 is really because we really think it's a wonderful um, residency to apply for if you're willing to be in portugal at least part of the year that's definitely yeah the best one as when we talked before we started this recording and this is very important is the fact that will allow professional activity in portugal from day one after getting the resident permit so
Well, professionally, I mean, they will be able to work for Portuguese companies. They will be able to be self-employed. They will be able, of course, to have their own company. That's why this general concept of professional activity is quite a, a very big range. It's any professional activity, whatever they want to do, it will be eligible. Yes. When we compare to some other countries, and specifically to Spain, which is very so close to us, and I know many uh, of the D7 applicants are also searching because we are so close uh, to, the, to the Spanish program, but Spain will not allow professional activity on the first year. Uh, not, I mean, not individual professional activity. Yeah. So, when they get to the residency, so once they apply and they are approved for the residency visa, they will have... First of all, three months to get the visa stamped in their passport. Okay, three months. After that visa will be issued for four months. And during those four months, they have, they have to fly to Portugal and complete the procedure. That means get an appointment at the SEF, at immigration, um, to complete the, the, the procedure for the residency. Um, and at that moment, of course, they will have to have the... Uh, national health, uh, not national, but an insurance, health insurance being done. There are some documentation that will be, that will help them with on the, and will be, have to be delivered on the second stage, prove that they really have a residency at that moment. They already have uh, that residency and that address, specifically some utility bill or bank statement already with that address also helps. And so, and the appointment used to be, I mean, we still book the appointments, but the embassies are getting some pre-date appointment at nowadays but we are, we can change according to the you know to the applicant's availability and to the of course the availability and um, we can adapt um, and that will be what we call the second stage already in portugal as i said key here is to have a residency actually to have a residency and prove it and um, after the appointment in more or less one month uh, the applicant will get the resident permit card that will be issued for two years and then renewed for another three and another three. So nowadays it's how it's So when they, when they renew it, they just have to go and show the same evidence again? Yes. Sort of pay and the salary and... They, yes, they have to prove that they have income, of course, coming in on a regular basis. That will be important or either or having money sitting in a Portuguese bank account. Yeah. at that moment but it's important to prove that there is enough income at that point it's the most important thing is proof that there is enough income to live in portugal and we when we talk about income living in portugal it's the minimum salary at least the minimum, what salary. Is the minimum salary 665 euros uh, yeah and that's it. okay and will that change it always changed on a yearly yeah. basis oh, depends okay. on our budget yeah. but it's um it's been very you know updating <laughs> very slowly so but it's more or less per month per month yeah. that will be uh for this year and um when we're talking about family unification and you asked me about that now yeah. uh, in terms of income the main applicant has also to prove uh, that there is enough income for the spouse and for the children and that the minimum would be 50 percent of the portuguese median salary for the spouse 30 percent for each child now, the process for the family unification, we have two ways of doing it. It's possible to, after the main applicant gets its own permit, residency permit, the, all the family can fly to Portugal on a Schengen visa, be in Portugal, and can even fly this first stage as long as they are here under the Schengen visa. Legally, we can even postpone for another 90 days while waiting for a safe appointment. Because what we do, the minute the client gets the appointment and you know to complete the residency we will be able after he gets his resident permit to get uh, of the family unification procedure so we book appointments we uh, work on the documentation that is necessary for each family member and uh, and it will be one appointment only meaning they don't really need to start in their home country they can do the whole process in portugal that's one possibility but it recently, and especially because of all this COVID situation and travel restrictions, in some cases we had to work with the D6. What is the D6? It's meaning it's getting a residency visa for family members. But first you have to have the main applicant approved and get his own residency per visa, a permit. We're talking about permit now. And then the family can start their own process at the local 
country or the country of residency uh, and apply for a specific residency visa for family unification. That helped them to travel to Portugal due to the regular travel restrictions. Mm -hmm. okay. With, you know, if we go back and we are going back to what it was in terms of travel, uh, that will not be necessary and we can go back to, you know, working the way we were doing that, meaning the family can come under the Schengen visa and then we will apply in Portugal. It really will depend on the income. If both of them, or each of them, has their own income, it makes sense to apply if they and if they want to come to Portugal at the same time and have exactly the same time frame and apply at the same time, it's the only way. Mm -hmm. So we can apply, you know, for two D7 visas and they will be independently. And they, it's not depending on the marriage, it's not family unification, it's two main applications. But that means they can do at the same time. Mm -hmm. Get the approval. This could be a good idea, I think you, you already advised a client about this, that if, if it's difficult for them to prove the relationship, if they're not married? Oh, then, the, oh definitely, <laughs> definitely. If they are not married, because then you fell, you fall under the total discretionary power of the, you know, the immigration, because we need to prove cohabitation more than two years, and not every country has exactly the same documentation to prove as we demand, you know, in Portugal for Portuguese. And we've been, we had many situations, similar situations. So if in that case, the two of them have their own income, so they are eligible for D7 as a main applicant, for sure that will be the best, the best to do. Because both will be eligible, they are eligible in both situations, but definitely, Working remotely and having a you know regular income, let's coming in on a regular basis, it's really appealing to our government uh, compared to self-employment not having and not proving uh, at least on the past that there is a regular income coming in. When you say regular, doesn't mean to be weekly or monthly. Do it some regular basis. That would be that is important. And of course, working remotely is a regular basis. One thing that is important, uh, you know, for this kind of application D7, when we're talking about working agreements with a foreign company, is to get the question from the employer, you know, to prove that that person can work remotely. That will be key. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just to expand a bit on the, on the freelancer mm -hmm. part, um, a lot of freelancers take their income in, in dividends or, like, they have different projects. And so from month to month, the income they take is different. Can it be sort of average over 12 months? Oh, yeah, yes, of yeah. course. It can be an average over the 12 months. What is important is to, you know, get proofs of that income. You know, yeah. if they are freelancers, of course, they cannot be on a monthly, as, as I said. Uh, but in different projects. But if we can prove uh, that there is enough money and that they have been having that activity for quite a some time and they have been, you know, and the average of the year, that's why the bank statements is important, um, you know, proves that there is enough money to live in Portugal, that will be enough. As you know, European Union uh, uh, means freedom of, you know, movement and freedom of working in, in different countries. So that means there's a lot of legislation to accept on that, you know, different the qualifications or, or to give some equivalency of your qualifications in all, all over, all, in all European Union countries. In terms of UK, this is very recent. Uh, we don't know. Uh, we don't know exactly if there there'll be some qualifications that will be still automatically recognized in Portugal or no. Uh, what we know from third countries is most of some countries they knew sometimes they have to do some exam some have legally immediately equivalency and they are recognized uh, in Portugal so it also depends on the profession that we're talking about and um, and, and the country UK is very specific because so until so recently it was completely free of freedom of movement so we, I think there's still we are in a transition period and there's still a lot of legislation to, to be issued you know and proved what we know from the immigration law side uh, is that we ne always need to know what crime are we talking about if it's still there so if it's in our criminal report we need we, we are aware of that so we need to know what crime and what is the penalty in our penal code, criminal code that we have here in portugal 
what is the penalty, the, you know, the minimum penalty for that specific crime. If it's less than one year prison, it won't be jeopardized the application. Well, I hope you found some useful stuff in there to guide you with planning your move to Portugal. If you've got any other questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and also click subscribe while you're at it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.